My most memorable moment was I returned match figures of none for 140 on debut. <laughs> And they picked me for the next test. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Today we'll be discussing um, a way of beating Australia in one day cricket. Uh, I'll be reviewing the Australian test squad that's just been chosen to tour India. And I'll be answering your Twitter questions. But let's lead off with a game plan to beat Australia in one day cricket. I'm a big fan of us in the white ball game, particularly 50 overs. Uh, we're the current World Cup holders, we're ranked number one in ICC ratings and we're devilishly hard to beat. In 2016 we won 17 ODIs and lost just 11. How do you beat Australia? Well, when you bowl you've got to get Warner early. I know it sounds obvious, but you do. He's an absolute destroyer of attacks if you don't get it right against him. He wins the power play and he can put you away by the 20th over. You've got to get D Warner early. If you do, you can pressure the middle order. But your fast bowlers have to move it. We saw the other night that once it moves, people play and miss, they nick, you get them out. When it stops moving, hello, flat track bolly. And your spinner has to have tricks. There's no use being flat and tidy and economical against Australia on the, on the good batting pitches. You've got to be tricky. Imad Wazim, the Pakistan left arm, it varies his pace, varies his spin. He's got tricks. He looked as if he could get three or four. I think he got two. He's a chance. You also have to go to the wire against Australia in the field. There's no point doing good work for 40 of the 50 overs and then have it fall away in the last 10. You've got to go to the very last ball of the 50th over. Australia will. You've got to chase down things. You've got to make the catches. You've got to cut balls off in the field that would have gone to the boundary. If you don't do that, Australia will have a competitive total they can defend. And when you chase those totals, um, Stark, Cummins and Hazelwoods are absolute units with the ball. They're hard to beat. They're the muscle. They're the platform. They're the engine room. They're everything. And it's easy from this uh, study to say, oh, you've got to get on top of them. They're difficult to get on top of. Mitchell Stark with those flying saucers at 145k. Hazel with the McGrath metronomic line and length. And Cummins with the extra yard of pace gets people out. Doesn't keep it um, uh, doesn't keep it tight, but just gets people out. Those three are, are locks. You've got to then sweat on Faulkner. James Faulkner is a very straight bowler, but he wouldn't move it if he swallowed eight laxettes. The, the thing with him is you've got to sweat on the left arm Chinaman and bomb it like Virat Kohli does. You've also got to attack the spinner. Um, whether it's Adam Zampa or the part-timers like Head or Maxwell, you've got to make them go for 55 plus. If you don't, Australia are controlling and, you, and they'll defend the total. You've also got to bomb them. You, you don't creep up on the Australian total by compact, measured, disciplined. When South Africa beat Australia 5-0, they out-hit Australia with the clean fours and sixes. And that's why you've got to pack your side with people who hit it over the boundary rope. You've got a risk. You won't beat them with a measured approach. And that's why um, Pakistan struggled in game one. Unless their bombers get away with some clean hits, they'll struggle in game two. Um, that's a game plan. Hard to beat the world number one, but you've got to go in with particular um, uh, strategies in mind. There's a few of them. For those who watched last week, when I said I wouldn't take Glenn Maxwell to India, wrong. <laughs> Thought he played tremendously well in the first one day. Um, didn't bowl, that's a plus for him. Um, but, I mean, he showed me that on certain pitches, Glenn Maxwell can be very effective in the middle order. The Australian selectors have seen it that way. 
They've stacked the side with spinners to go to India. There's uh, Steve O'Keefe, Nathan Lyon, Mitchell Swepson, who we mentioned on this show a few weeks ago, the leg spinner from Queensland. He's done very well to make that team. Ashton Agar's made it. So the, uh, Glenn Maxwell can bowl those off spinners. So we've got plenty of spin options, but the main men, of course, will be Stark and Hazelwood. I don't think we can win the series unless they fire up. Stark has terrific form on the subcontinent. He was great in a losing team in Sri Lanka. And again, it's him at the top of, of the order with the new ball and with the old ball. If Stark has a good series, we can win it, um, regardless of how many spinners we've taken. Um, Mitchell Marsh goes again. He undoes Hilton Cartwright in the middle order. Uh, and I think that's a good move. Hilton Cartwright's feet looked a little sluggish, as are Mitchell Marsh's, but he's a clean hitter and he's the best bowler of the bowling all-rounders. Um, he gets it to stay down on pitches where there's no bounce. He'll be a real factor over there. Osman Kawaja's there. There's a question mark on, on how he plays on really turning pitches against quality off spin. We'll find out in due course. Uh, and Sean Marsh goes again. Um, he's such a good player on slow pitches and I'm sure he's there as cover in case Matt Renshaw has difficulties with the England spinners uh, opening the innings. So all in all, um, people like Travis Head have missed out, Adam Zampa, Farwed Ahmed. Um, it's, it's as strong as a, a squad as we could have selected. Um, Matthew Way, by virtue of his one day hundred and that he's an improving wicket keeper, takes the gloves. So. Good luck to the boys. It's a tough tour, we know. I think they can win it. Um, a lot will depend on winning tosses. They're the crucial um, aspects of touring into India. If you win the toss and you bat, you're a chance of using uh, the pitch at its best, and that's a key. You don't want to be batting on the fifth day. That can be deadly. But look, let's look at your questions. Harry Butler asks, why do they keep selecting the Marsh Brothers? They've had more comeback tours than Farnham. Well, uh, thanks for your question, Harry. And next Christmas, Mitchell and Sean Marsh will be releasing a Christmas album with Delta Goodrum. <laughs> Just like Farnsey did. They take Sean Marsh to the subcontinent because he's an outstanding player on slow pitches. Um, like Michael Hussey before him and Tom Moody, they come out of Perth, but they play well on slow decks. I'm sure he's there as a, as a cover for Matthew Renshaw. If, if things don't go up, let's see how he goes. Um, I'm a fan of Mitchell Marsh as a bowler, and I think on particular pitches, he's such a strong hitter down the ground. He can really hurt you and build a total if you've got the platform. On turning pitches, he tries hard. Um, we're gonna find out whether his game has gone to the next level. D Marsh asks, should forward Ahmed have been in contention for India. He has the Viper and is ahead of Agar. Well, that's not how it's panned out. Uh, Agar goes because he bounces those left arm orthodox spinners. And there's a question mark over Farwood Ahmed. I'm a big fan. I think he's Dutchy Holland from back in the 80s. He loops it slowly. He has the leg spinner. Uh, he has the wrong and he bowled well the other night in a T20. But there's a suggestion that on really slow pitches, he's been vulnerable and I think they took him to the West Indies and to England and he didn't come up. So I think they may have run out of patience with Farwad Ahmed. It's a shame because he's a quality bowler, but I think um, his days of, uh, of playing in the Australian setup may be numbered. Jack Duffy asks, will we ever see Tim Payne play for Australia? Well, unfortunately, I think Tim Payne's ship has sailed. It's sad because He's been getting lots of runs in short form. He's the neatest gloveman in Australia. He probably makes less errors than any of the other wicket keepers in Australia. But um, they just seem to be moving in another direction now. You need a hurtful number seven, and Matthew Wade is definitely that. Um, the options upcoming, if it's not to be Wade, will probably be young choices. People like Sam Whiteman, Western Australia, Sam Harper, Victoria. And the Cricket Australia 11 um, wicketkeeper who got some runs against Pakistan in a lead-up game, Josh Inglis. Watch this name. He, he, a lot of people are whispering he could be the real deal. Justin Ward asks, um, do you think Bangladesh will ever be a force in world cricket? Well, I do. 
because they have a leg spinner who is very much an outstanding bowler. They have a left arm quick bowler who's as good as Mitchell Stark. Uh, and they have Shakib Al Hassan and a couple of other batsmen. Bangladesh are a coming force. It's just a shame that Australia didn't tour there uh, for security reasons. If that improves, it'll be a very difficult tour. Very much like India for our players. Slow turning pitches, quality spinners, and very good slow pitch play batsmen. Um, Bangladesh are a force. They just need um, more experience against the better countries. I'm looking forward to their development over the next few years. Thank you.